Hello guys, welcome to the next movie. I will show today a disassemble of the gearbox in the CYC X1 stealth motor. I'm using this bike intensively for around 4 months. And uh, recently gearbox started to make like, louder noises. Uh, so I think it's time for maintenance to open it and see if any gears are broken or not. Uh, check the condition of it. And then I will clean it and lubricate it again. So watch it till the end. Okay, before I will open the motor, I will let you hear uh, what kind of noise this motor is generating. So I just hope the microphone in this camera is good enough. So I just, as you can see, I disassemble all the chains. So we hear only the noise from the motor. So as you can see, it's more pronounced on the very low speed. It's getting higher than this uh, rubbing noise is going away. So let's hear it again. So as you can see motor works fine. Just to it's just a matter to check if uh, everything is all right with gears inside. On the table you can see the motor. <laughs> it's in prime condition. <laughs> just a lot of mud, uh, but it doesn't affect the performance. So what I'll be doing now will be to remove this whole right side. This bracket has to go away to get access to the gearbox which is here. So that's why it's not possible to do this uh, when motor is on the bike. Yeah. So I'll remove all these elements. Not sure how many of them do I need to uh, take off everything. But I will see on the way. Yeah. And what I get uh, information from CYC, I need to pull this part out of the motor. Okay, so let's go ahead with this job. Alright, I can see that I removed the controller to not have anything uh, obstructing the access to the gears. So I already removed all four bolts and the tensioner. And what I see, I don't have to remove this uh, sprocket because the whole uh, gearbox assembly is getting out very easily. So I hope you see it very well. Yeah, so this is the planetary gear. Here is the motor. Use the gearing. Yeah. Oh, I don't see anywhere. Maybe you can see better with the light. So that's how it works. So my plan actually is to take everything here. Full disassembly. So I need to take off this uh, main sprocket. It's really uh, sitting tight, so I'll have to use this puller to take it off. Then I'll have access below this cover. You can see that I have removed the sprocket. It's quite hard to take it out. Without the puller, it's impossible, I would say. Forget about pulling it out by hand. There's no way you can do this. So, 
the sprocket is held in place by this common uh, metal piece which is going to the recess here of the shaft as you can see we have this recess for this piece and the sprocket as well Okay, so now I can take out the seal clips and get access below this cover. On the table you can see all the parts of the motor. We can start with this cover first. So it's going here as you can see. Nothing unique here, it's just a piece of metal. Let me go further. Here is this removable clamp. Oh, it just pops out like this. On the inside, you can see this uh, roller's bearing. And on this side, you can see towards the motor, you can see the teeth where this planetary gear is rolling over. So these elements are assembled like this. Just slide in. Okay. I already noticed one thing with this bearing rollers. That's where this squeaking noise is coming from. Probably you can hear it. So I hope that a lot of grease will help here and this noise will go away. What else I noticed interesting here? There is a gasket in this small recess around, but as you can see it's already damaged. The problem is that this gasket is very close to the bolts I will put back in the recess. You can see it here. So whenever you put the installation bolt holding this whole assembly it's rubbing against the gasket. And that's why it get broken on this side somehow. When I was putting in and out this uh, tensioner uh, cover. Maybe you can see it better like this. So when these bolts are sliding in, they are rubbing against the rubber. So it's too, the bolts are too close to this rubber, fortunately. I don't have spare ones, so probably I will use some kind of water resistant uh, o-ring uh, grease just to prevent water going inside hope it will work so, let's go farther quickly I can talk about yeah. so here is like planetary gearing with the bearing here it's like one way bearing rotates this way and then blocks another See better here. Yeah. These bearings are okay, they are rolling smoothly, so nothing has to be done with it. Yeah. Very dirty hands. <laughs> here you can see the motor compartment. So this is just a shell. This is the left side of the motor. Here is the motor. I will not open it. Uh, it's working fine, so no point of taking this out. You can see the sear clip holding the this cover from the axle. Okay. I will wash these elements and uh, grease them again and try to put this back together. Uh, 
decided to try out uh, this uh, brass gears. They are completely new. And of course, uh, holding in reserve this old uh, steel gears, just in case. And that's how it looks like this. Planetary gear boss, I don't know how you call it. Yeah. <clears throat> so I will grease everything and then I will put it back all the parts together. And I will do some test of noise levels on the bench and the motor is fully assembled. I have greased all the parts. Motor, cover, planetary gear. Yeah, you can see better the zoom. So there's a lot of grease. Yeah. And this is the type I'm using. It's the small eco type. It's uh, basically lithium grease of molybdenum. They have different names on the market. Yeah, but that's the stuff which was coming originally. It's black goo. <laughs> okay, I put everything then together and see how it works. Alright, you can see the motor fully assembled. Connected spare screen of uh, gas. So I found the C display version. So I'll just do a quick test. Motor is working fine. And I can feel that it's much smoother on the low rotations now. I can just hear very rubbing noise, I can say, but much less than before, it's low speed. I go higher. say is it less noisier than before with the steel gears yeah but the, the, these are the new ones so this needs to be taken into account and they will just uh, wear off a little bit after usage so probably will be even less noisier uh, okay so now it's time to put the motor back on the back Okay guys, time to summarize uh, this whole uh, repair or maintenance uh, made on this uh, CYCX1 stuff motor. I took this bike for a trip today for around 45 uh, kilometers just to check how it works now. Yeah, I can say it's smoother way than before. So I see the effect of uh, the cleaning the motor and lubricating it with the new grease. I put this uh, brass gears as well. Uh, I don't see big difference in noise levels, to be honest. But I can hear it's actually running smoother than before. How to say, is it uh, caused by new gears or by the new gear, uh, sorry, grease? But I think both uh, things helps here. So, what I can say, 
Maybe I'll just take camera so you can see better what I want to say. So what I can recommend uh, with this uh, stealth motor is to improve the design of the gaskets. This one is okay, uh, there were no damages, but as, as you saw on the previous uh, chapters, this O-ring is completely broken, so she would be way better to replace it with this automotive uh, motor uh, gaskets, the flat ones. So you are using on the cylinder heads, so then you can slide the bolts through the gasket and it will not damage it. Hmm. Are you interested uh, what is the total mileage of this motor? I'll just show you quickly. So now I have 931 kilometers after today's trip. So what I can say, probably this motor requires uh, lubricating with new oil or grease uh, every thousand kilometers. But it all depends how how much you are pushing it. Uh, if you are riding on pass, probably it will last longer. With we we'll have like longer uh, service intervals. But if you are riding on throttle only, then probably you have to do this more frequently. Before I finish the movie I will say quickly something about the grease I have used uh, for this motor. I was thinking about uh, using this uh, normal grease for bearings. This is lithium type grease. But then uh, when I was talking with CIC they said that they are using normal, by default uh, this uh, molecule type. When I check on the internet uh, what sort of uh, grease it is, it's basically the same type lithium uh, based one as this one. But the main difference is that uh, this molycot is coming with a molybdenum sulfide uh, additive. So what is the difference between them then? When I see the specifications it's mainly the temperature operative range. So both of them uh, starts from minus 30 uh, Celsius degrees. And this one uh, can be operated up to 120, and this molecule type up to 150. So it's around 30 degrees difference, Celsius degrees, remember. And uh, there is also information about the melting point for this one, which is around 190. Uh, so it means that probably if you are using the motor um, a lot with uh, throttle and you are heating this up a lot, this is the choice the grease for your motor. This one probably will be okay as well, but I put this black one so I will have no comparison. And here you can see the colors and the texture of this grease. This one is more subtle I would say, more fluid one and this is much thicker. So probably this is the reason why this is recommended for the gearing systems. Yeah. Okay, thanks for watching this movie. Enjoy rides, take care, and see you in the next uh, movie. Bye bye.